how biometrics can prevent the use of uh, multiple number of uh, credentials traditional means of credentials which are assigned uh, to the same person okay so uh, today uh, we will be uh, discussing uh, on biometric systems today we will introduce uh, the biometric systems and then uh, we will see the different uh, biometrics evidences and how a biometric system works okay so uh, first of all uh, it will be uh, uh, it will be uh, uh, so it will be important uh, to uh, introduce uh, the biometric system and uh, and and the related uh, components which are uh, very much associated with the biometric system or how and uh, how they uh, works for authentication and identification so uh, these are the issues uh, we will focus today so now uh, we will uh, define what is biometrics so uh, biometrics uh, we can define biometrics consist of methods for uniquely recognizing humans based upon one or more intrinsic physical and behavioral traits in the last class uh, we have introduced uh, uh, some physical and behavioral characteristics or physiological or behavioral characteristics so uh, today we will see that uh, uh, how this uh, biometrics evidences uh, uh, look like okay so what are the different biometrics evidences are available for authentication and identification so uh, so we can have the face we can have fingerprint we can have iris we can have offline signature palm and hand geometry retina face thermogram online signature okay so we can have many other uh, biometrics evidences like footprint uh, dna uh, dna signature so uh, these are the physiological and behavioral uh, biometric traits or evidences so that can be used for identification or authentication now we have we have many choices now out of uh, out of which uh, we we can select we can select a small number of biometrics evidences that are uh, very much popular or widely used uh, in uh, in case of uh, authentication or identification now among these biometrics evidences so which uh, which biometrics evidences uh, uh, can be used for uh, authentication or identification so if we select some of the some of the biometrics evidences then uh, our uh, first choice will be face fingerprint and iris because face and fingerprint both these biometric systems uh, are having a legacy of uh, databases which are using for more than 100 years okay so face database has a legacy which has been used for more than 100 years fingerprint uh, has also a legacy of uh, database which has been used for more than 100 years so uh, apart from uh, face and fingerprint iris is very much popular so because of the accuracy of the iris recognition so iris is uh, iris is becoming very popular um, biometric traits so other traits can also be used uh, in different uh, uh, in different situations so uh, uh, according to the according to the according to the application requirement according to the situation we can select a biometric system and uh, uh, use that biometric system for recognition purpose okay now here you can see that uh, when we collect uh, biometrics evidences so biometrics evidences are available uh, biometrics evidences are available uh, from uh, a human being uh, which can be uh, used for uh, identification or authentication so here we can see that uh, some of the biometrics evidences are uh, gate evidences then palm print hand geometry fingerprint ids face voice and signature so uh, we can have uh, many more choices but out of which uh, we have to select uh, the prominent ones prominent one means the uh, according to the property of the biometrics uh, systems or according to the property of biometrics evidences we need to select a few ones 
which are uh, which are proved to be very much useful for identification or authentication now what are the different requirements of biometric tests that means if we want to if we want to choose a biometric uh, system or biometric trait or biometric evidence then on what basis we will uh, select a biometric system or biometrics evidence so uh, there are some properties based on which uh, we can select a biometrics system or biometrics evidence the first property says that uh, every individual uh, must possess the characteristics or attribute for successful authentication that means uh, if we consider a fingerprint uh, recognition system then uh, we uh, we expect that every individual should have fingerprint email uh, fingerprint okay so that we can collect the fingerprint image and uh, use for uh, authentication purpose so this is called universality okay then uh, the next property is invariance what is invariance so biometrics characteristics should be constant over a long period of time okay so this is called invariance then uh, we have measurability the characteristics should be suitable for capturing with minimum time and must be easy to gather the attribute data passively okay so here the biometrics uh, characteristics should be suitable for capturing with minimum time and must be easy to gather the attribute uh, data passively so this is called measurability and then what is singularity singularity means each expression of the attribute must be unique to the individual okay that means that uh, when whenever a person is identified so he must be identified uniquely okay uniquely means that uh, that evidence is uh, that evidence is very much uh, uh, very much different from the other individual that means if we uh, if we deal with the same biometric states or same biometric evidence then we need to have the unique uh, biometric evidence so that we can differentiate a biometric evidence from one person to another this is this is called singularity okay then what is reducibility the captured data should be reducible to a size which is easy to handle okay this is called reducibility then uh, we have reliability and tamper resistance the impractical to mask or manipulate so this is uh, um, this is another property but this is not uh, this is not uh, very much important like universality and uh, invariance universality and invariance these uh, these two properties are uh, more important than the other properties if these two properties does not uh, does not have with any biometric state then uh, we should reject that biometric trait or biometric evidence for authentication okay then we should have the privacy the process should uh, not violate the privacy of the person then uh, we have compatible it should be able to reduce the attribute to a state that makes it digitally compatible to others this is called compatible okay this is another uh, biometrics property and uh, we could have many more properties but uh, these are the these are the uh, these are the main uh, we can uh, we can say these are the main requirements for a biometric trait uh, we should be used for authentication or uh, identification now what are the biometric trait we cannot use for uh, uh, identification or authentication there are some uh, biometric traits or some uh, we can say the uh, the some portion of human body that cannot be used for authentication or identification like tongue print okay so here tongue print cannot be used for uh, identification or authentication because this is not very prominent uh, biometric trait that can be used for identification okay so many other such uh, biometric traits are available but uh, these are very weak uh, biometric traits or we can say these biometric traits are not having those properties which are needed for uh, needed for biometric uh, biometric traits to be um, used for authentication or identification okay so these are called rejected biometric technologies or rejected biometric traits now uh, there will be some situation where uh, we need to select uh, some biometric traits uh, for uh, using uh, using it then in that situation okay so uh, if we consider some of uh, some of the situations or some of the conditions where we have to 
we will be allowed to choose a biometric strip for identification or authentication then we need to carefully choose a biometric strip or biometric system uh, for uh, you for using in that situation okay now uh, we could have uh, some of the uh, situations uh, that like in mining areas in mining areas what happens when a, a worker uh, goes inside the mining and uh, come out uh, from uh, that uh, in, uh, come out that uh, mining okay so we have to track uh, track those persons who is going inside and who is coming outside so we have to track those persons uh, uh, to in that situation we have to uh, use some biometric system which can uh, track the persons who are going inside and who are coming outside okay so uh, in that situation we cannot use uh, if we consider uh, that situation uh, we can ask that uh, can we use a face biometric system or can we use hand uh, hand biometric systems or can we use iris biometric systems so in that situation uh, uh, in that situation i think iris biometrics will work because face in, in case of face biometrics so that cannot be that cannot be identified properly if we use the hand biometrics so we cannot use the hand biometrics because of uh, that dart will be there on hand so we cannot use that uh, simply we can reject uh, that biometrics if we consider uh, if we consider other biometrics like fingerprint fingerprint cannot be uh, used in that situation so therefore iris will be iris will be the uh, suitable uh, suitable biometric system in that situation so my, in in case of mining areas uh, many uh, uh, many mining areas in china are using iris biometric system for authentication or identification or tracking the persons who are going inside and coming outside okay then in case of uh, atm machine we can use face biometric system and we can also have the choice to use fingerprint biometric system or a hand geometry so these are the biometrics that can be used for uh, atm machines also but in case of uh, if we consider another situation like airport or railway station so in that situation which biometric state will be suitable to use so if we think about the face recognition or at the entry point if we install a fingerprint recognition system then at the entry point we authenticated the person with fingerprint then uh, the movement of that person will be monitored by a face recognition system so inside the airport or inside the railway uh, station we can have a uh, face biometric system that can track the movement of the person by uh, using uh, the faces of those persons that means uh, every time uh, every time we we need to we need to track uh, that person who is coming inside who is going outside okay so that the imposter can be prevented to enter into the system or enter into the airport or uh, railway station okay so uh, when we select a biometric system uh, for a uh, for authentication or identification or matching then we have to select a biometric system according to the application requirement according to the situation according to the condition so that uh, we can select the uh, right biometric system or correct biometric system for that purpose now here you can see the ma major biometrics project that are running in uh, different uh, countries so india is using aadhaar uh india is using uh, aadhar card uh, for authentication or identification united nations also have some programs australia australia's uh, pro australia project name is smartgate so smartgate is using in australia e passport is using in brazil so we can have so many so many biometric system, uh, projects that are running in different countries so biomet so uh, now biometrics voter registration uh, voter registration uh, uh, is uh, running in 60 uh, more than 60 countries okay so biometrics voter registration is also an important uh, application where uh, if this is uh, if uh, if such systems are uh, installed in, in, our, in our country like india then uh, i think there will be a there will be a 
transparency in the system so that uh, the right rightful owner of the voter id card can uh, cast his uh, vote okay so many other in many other systems in many other situations these biometrics in the biometric systems can be incorporated now this is the global uh, biometrics uh, market so uh, so here you can see how day by day the use of uh, biometric systems are increasing and the projected uh, valuation of the biometrics market as, uh, is also increasing okay so here you can see the projected uh, estimation of biometrics market and the valuation at the same time we can see the valuation of biometrics systems now uh, if i ask you uh, how biometric systems identify or uh, identify or verify a person uh, then uh, what will be your answer if i ask you how biometric system identify or verify a system then uh, we need to first understand how biometric system works okay so uh, biometric system mainly consists of uh, two phases that means uh, this uh, biometric systems uh, build upon two phases the first phase is called enrollment and the second phase is called uh, matching or uh, we can say the recognition okay what is enrollment enrollment means uh, user after capturing the bio uh, after uh, capturing the biometrics evidences or biometrics characteristics like face fingerprint iris uh, hand geometry we need to register that uh, identity along with the Uh, biometrics evidences in the database oh, okay this is called the enrollment enrollment means we need to enroll we need to enroll the person with their biometrics evidences into the system okay now after enrollment uh, we need to we need to recollect we need to recollect or recapture the biometrics evidence from the same person or from different person for identification or verification purpose then that recollected biometrics evidence is match with the stored uh, uh, stored template or we can say the stored image in the database if match is found if match is uh, if match is correct then we say that uh, the person is genuine uh, for verification or for identification we will say the person has been identified okay if match is not found that means the uh, proximity the matching proximity is not very close to the Uh, to the match uh, to the match template then we will simply uh, reject the uh, corresponding user and uh, we uh, label that user as an imposter okay now what uh, the biometric system contains so if we study the biometric system then we will see there are uh, there are four uh, components are there the first component is called uh, the first component uh, is called the uh, acquisition of acquisition of biometrics data okay and then the second component is uh, pre processing the third component is in matching and the fourth component is a decision okay so in the first component uh, uh, we use different sensors or you use different uh, different such devices to capture the biometrics evidences for example if we consider the fingerprint recognition or verification then for fingerprint we can use the optical sensor okay so what happens so when we put uh, when we place our finger on a optical sensor the optical sensor captures the fingerprint image then that image is uh, there that image is enrolled in the database and and we, again we recollect uh, the fingerprint image with the help of optical sensor then that uh, recollected uh, images match with the stored uh, stored template in the database okay so for fingerprint recognition we can use we can use uh, different uh, different sensors to capture the fingerprint image uh, for face recognition we can use the uh, high quality uh, high quality cameras to capture the face image we can use uh, uh, we can use uh, devices for Uh, id image also okay so different uh, different sensors are used to capture the biometrics evidences 
so after capturing the biometrics evidences uh, these biometrics evidences will go through a pre processing uh, pre processing process or pre processing module now this pre processing module consists of three sub components the first sub component is called quality estimation then the, we can have segmentation and uh, the, the third component is enhancement now what is quality estimation in the quality estimation uh, module we check whether the quality of the biometrics evidence is uh, good or not okay good means the 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 necessary uh, necessary salient or distinctive features are available in the image or not so that is to be checked in the quality estimation module then after quality estimation module uh, we can have segmentation in segmentation module we segment uh, the bio, uh, we segment the actual biometrics evidence that is available in the image from the background so here we here we separate the biometrics uh, uh, biometrics actual biometrics evidence from the background or background noise that is called segmentation so segmentation is the uh, second pre uh, segmentation is the uh, second module of the pre processing uh, process or pre processing module then we can have another sub component enhancement in enhancement we increase the quality of the signal that is available available in the image so here Uh, signal means the salient and distinctive features salient and distinctive features uh, uh, salient and distinctive features means here the the uh, pixel quality uh, pixel quality of the images or the or the pixels which are available in the biometrics evidence so this uh, the quality of the pixel value should be good otherwise we cannot uh, we cannot use that uh, we cannot use that biometrics evidence for authentication okay so enhancement is uh, enhancement is an important uh, important sub component in biometric system uh, through which uh, we increase the quality of the signal uh, of the biometrics evidence so uh, so after that uh, we have the feature extraction module in the feature extraction module what we do in the feature extraction module we extract the distinctive features so uh, distinctive features means so if we divide the uh, if we divide the uh, feature extraction techniques according to the according to the property of the features then uh, we can have the we can have the texture feature okay or we can have the invariant uh, feature we can have the model based feature so according to the according to the according to the feature extraction techniques we can divide the features into uh, into multiple number of into multiple number of uh, feature multiple number of uh, feature encoding techniques okay so we need to uh, we need to apply the feature extraction techniques according to the according to the quality of the biometrics evidence or according to the application of the biometric systems so then only we can uh, extract uh, the uh, suitable features uh, for authentication or for encoding purpose okay and uh, the next module is uh, matcher module or matching module in matcher in matcher module or matching module uh, initially we store the uh, reference template or uh, biometrics uh, evidences uh, biometrics evidences in the database okay so in database we, uh, we uh, in the database we uh, do not store the image directly we uh, get the we get the encoded uh, features as a template and those templates are stored in the database okay and during matching when uh, when the biometric sample is recollected or recaptured then uh, from that recaptured or recollected um, biometrics evidence uh, we extract the same features okay same features then that feature says Uh, is converted uh, converted to uh, query template okay then then that query template is matched with the uh, stored reference template so if the match is found then we say that uh, uh, match is found that means match is found means the the proximity is high if the matching proximity is high then we say the corresponding user is verified correctly okay corresponding user is verified correctly or identified correctly 
okay so uh, for that purpose matching module or matcher module produces matching scores so matching scores uh, can have two forms when the uh, for similarity purpose matching score should be high okay uh, if we consider the matching score is the dissimilarity uh, score then uh, the matching scores uh, should be very minimum that means the uh, matching score here the matching score will be uh, found as uh, distance between distance between the query template and the reference template that means the when the distance is minimum they say that uh, the dissimilarity uh, or uh, we can if the distance is maximum then we say that the dissimilarity between the query template and the reference template is high otherwise the uh, otherwise the distance between query template and reference template is low okay so uh, we can have we can have different forms of matching scores so we can use the we can use the matching scores accordingly uh, depending upon the application of the biometric systems okay and the last module is the decision module so in that after uh, after generating the matching score by matcher matcher module we need to take the decision whether the whether the query whether the query uh, query template will be accepted or rejected for verification or it is to be identified uh, correctly so this uh, decision module will take the decision and uh, when when the decision module will take the decision the system administrator will be there the system and administrator uh, system administrator uh, trigger the uh, trigger the decision module to take the decision properly okay can you listen me all yes sir okay ha uh, yes sir yes sir uh, any 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 questions from here if you have any questions you can ask me now otherwise uh, i will proceed for the next topic sir that uh, enrollment thing will be a uh, one time right one time thing no enrollment is not one time when the new user will come so we have to register the new user in the enrollment process okay because uh, uh, one time we cannot we cannot register all the users no i mean uh, for a, uh, for one user yeah for one user yeah yeah that is one time but if the evidence evidence uh, evidence properties are changed or evidence characteristics are changed then we need to re-register that user again okay okay if the characteristics are changed after 5 years or after 10 years or after 15 years then it is better to re-register that person again for the uh, new uh, with new characteristics okay so we are saying that the biometrics biometrics evidence is permanent but uh, that is not the case uh, in, uh, in case of face recognition so after 5 years or after 10 years or after 20 years the characteristics uh, will be changed and the, when the characteristics will be changed then we need to re restart that person again for enrollment okay okay sir any other questions if you have any other question you can ask me otherwise uh, we will go for another uh, topic Now here you can see an example of segmentation and enhancement okay so here uh, we segment or here we identify the uh, region of interest of uh, on face image okay then that region of interest is segmented from the background or segmented in the image okay so this segmented image uh, will be used for authentication or identification and this segmented image is uh, also enhanced 
for improving the quality of the signals which are available in the image okay and uh, this is an example of feature encoding here you can see that uh, from fingerprint image we extract the minusia features so these minusia features uh, will be matched that means when the minusia features are extracted uh, from a user then these minusia features are uh, stored as a template in the database okay when the same sample is recollected from the same person or different person from that uh, recollected biometric sample or biometric fingerprint sample we collect the we collect the minusia points then those minusia points are matched with the already uh, stored uh, minusia points and the number of minusia points which are matching so that will uh, that will represent that will represent the matching proximity or matching scores that means out of which how many minusia points are correctly matched okay so those uh, minusia points those number of minusia points will be referred as the matching scores now from the iris uh, iris image we uh, we can extract the iris code also and this iris code uh, is encoded into a feature set and that feature set is stored in that uh, stored as a template in the database and uh, when the, we recollect uh, we only recollect the same iris image wait there is a phone okay So from uh, iris image uh, here we uh, here we extract the iris code and this iris code uh, is encoded into a feature set and this feature set uh, is stored in the database as a temp uh, as a reference uh, reference template okay and again when we uh, recapture the iris image from that iris image also we extract the iris code and the, that iris code is uh, matched with the uh, stored template okay so uh, if we consider the face image from face image also uh, we can uh, we can extract the features so features can be extracted with different feature extraction techniques one such technique is lda features so here you, you can see the lda features are uh, encoded uh, encoded as a vector and this vector is used for the matching now uh, now we can have the biometrics functionalities so we can have the different biometrics functionalities and uh, these biometrics functional all the biometrics functionalities come under biometrics recognition that means for verification so uh, we can have three biometrics functionalities one is the verification second one is the identification and third one is the matching okay so all these biometrics functionalities come under recognition that means uh, we can say verification is a part of recognition or verification is a recognition identification is also a recognition matching is also recognition okay so these three functionalities will referred as the biometrics recognition now uh, we will see that uh, when we verify a person how this verification is done or when we identify a person how identification is done so for verification and identification purpose we need to register we need to register the template in the database okay that means uh, when a person is verified or identified so before identification or verification we need to register that uh, register the identity related to that uh, related to the user okay then 
when we recollect the sample biometric sample for identification or verification so that will be matched to the stored template so this is uh, this is done for verification or identification but uh, apart from verification or identification matching is also a, also a recog biometric recognition okay so but in matching uh, when we uh, when you do the matching so matching purpose we don't need to register the uh, we don't, don't need to register the personal identity that means the uh, biometric sample we don't need to register the biometric samples we don't need to capture the biometric uh, biometric sample earlier so uh, when the matching uh, matching is done during matching the uh, during matching the personal identity the personal identity is matched with the personal identity is matched with the uh, biometric sample that means here the personal identity means the traditional means of credentials okay so traditional means of credentials uh, we may have we may have voter id card we may have passport so if we consider as we if, if we consider a situation like railway station or uh, or airport then at the entry point uh, if a biometric system is installed match uh, for matching purpose then uh, one user may present uh, present himself uh, at the biometric system okay then the face image is captured and uh, that user may carry a traditional means of uh, credentials like uh, voter id card or something else and driving license or passport so the face image which is provided in the passport which is provided in the voter id card which is provided in the pan card okay that will be matched to the uh, that will be matched to the uh, face of the person sorry there is a phone call so in uh, matching uh, we need to match the uh, we need to match the biometrics evidence uh, with the traditional means of uh, traditional means of uh, uh, authentication uh, traditional means of credentials uh, like uh, voter id card or pan card okay so in uh, in verification or identification purpose uh, we need to register the uh, we need to register the identity but in case of matching uh, we don't need to register the identity of the uh, person and then what is verification so in verification a user may claim his identity okay then in reply of that uh, uh, claim identity uh, then uh, biometric systems uh, may verify that claim identity okay so this is verification in verification user may claim his identity and in reply the biometric systems will verify that identity whether the person whether the claim of that person is correct or not if it is found to be correct then uh, that person will be verified correctly or uh, uh, that person will be labeled as genuine uh, genuine user otherwise that person will be labeled as imposter user okay and in case of identity so verification is a one to one matching uh, but uh, identity is 
one to many means in case of identification one uh, the sample of unknown user is collected then that sample will be uh, that sample will be matched with n number of users that means uh, in the database n number of templates uh, templates are uh, given then uh, biometric sensor captures the biometric sample of unknown user or known user and then uh, feature extraction is done then we make the template and then uh, during matching uh, during identification this uh, uh, this user template or query template is matched with n number of templates okay and uh, out of which uh, out of which uh, there will be some there will be one uh, template so that will show the uh, maximum matching proximity okay or uh, that will exhibit maximum matching proximity and that will be labeled as the true match to the corresponding uh, user identity or query identity so in case of identification uh, one to many match uh, one to many match uh, many match are done okay and in case of verification one to one match is done now if we formulate the verification or identification then uh, from this formulation uh, we can understand uh, how verification and identification works so uh, in the first equation uh, you can see here i is the identity okay so capital i comma x a here capital i is the identity and here x a is the uh, template which is uh, generated from the uh, query user okay now this uh, template uh, will be match with uh, match with some identity in the database so this is the known identity since this is the known and both are known identity that means the reference template we provide the reference template and uh, then uh, that reference template is matched with the query template now we need to verify whether this whether these two templates are collected from the same person or not if they are collected to be if they are collected from the same person then this infers the genuine matching otherwise this will infer the imposter matching okay that means there will be a, there will be some threshold so based on the threshold uh, we need to we need to verify uh, we need to verify the corresponding person as genuine person and based on the threshold also we need to verify that person whether that person is imposter or not so uh, so here you can see that so s is compared s is compared uh, so s is compared with the threshold value eta so if s is found to be greater than equals to eta then the person is labeled as genuine otherwise if s is found to be less than eta then uh, that person will or the user will be labeled as imposter user so here one to one match one to one matching is done but when you formulate the identification uh, identification problem then we will see there will be a number of identities that means if we consider there are n number of identities then one one of n number of identities will be match uh, will be found to be the true match uh, for the user identity okay that means from the user identity we will collect uh, we will collect the features or we will collect the biometric samples and then that biometric sample is encoded into a feature set and that feature set will refer uh, the uh, query template and this query template will be matched with all the templates of n number of users in the database okay now one there will be one one such uh, template that will be found to be a true match to the query template then uh, when the when that true match will be found okay so true match may know maybe the maybe for the maybe uh, may be collected from the same person or from the different person okay so if it is uh, if it is collected from the same person then uh, uh, we can have the different uh, we can have the different identification uh, different identification type if it is found if it is found from a different person then we can have different uh, identification uh, problem so according to the identification uh, problem we can divide the identification into uh, two uh, identification types so one such identification type is open set identification another identification is closed set identification okay now what is open set identification 
So in open set identification, that means all the identities are not known to us, okay, or known to the known to the organization. So if we consider a organization like NIT Durgapur, then all the identities are known to us or known to the system. Okay, so this is called the close identity. And someone from NIT Durgapur is match match uh, is match with the templates which are which are which are from the known identities then that identification will be called the closed set identification in the closed set identification the number of number of reference templates will be very small okay that means the since this is this is an organization in in that organ in such organization the number of identities will be known to the system known to the known to us okay so this will be called the closed set identity in closed set identification all the identities are known but however we will uh, we will identify the known identities okay every time when uh, if the if the system if the identification system is installed in the main gate then uh, in the main gate at the entry point uh, the some person from nit durga pool will match okay in the closed set identification system but in case of open set identification system if you if you are moving from uh, if you are moving from kolkata to chennai then in the chennai different identification system will be available available okay and in that identification system uh, there will be a database and that database is the distributed database that means the distributed database uh, database databases are connected uh, uh, databases are connected uh, via uh, uh, by internet and when whenever some person will be some person will be uh, moving from kolkata to chennai or kolkata to delhi or kolkata to mumbai then uh, the, there will be a, there will be some uh, biometric system okay and for identification purpose uh, identification purpose the uh, distributed databases will be incorporated over there and then the matching will be uh, matching will be performed for identification now uh, based on the based on the universality and permanence property uh, we can select a biometric system uh, for recognition purpose but uh, biometric systems also uh, generate errors okay biometric systems are not 100% correct since this is the system therefore system will generate errors now for measuring those errors uh, we have different performance metrics uh, like false reject rate, false accept rate, failure to enroll rate, okay. Then uh, receiver operating characteristics curve, cumulative match characteristics curve. So what is false reject rate? So, and what is false accept rate? Now, uh, if we see uh, the first, uh, if we see the first graph for genuine and imposter score distribution, then we will see the uh, blue, uh, blue curve, blue curve, uh, represent the imposter density and the red curve uh, represent the genuine density okay and there will be a threshold now where this threshold uh, where this threshold will be selected that means where this threshold will be placed between imposter density and genuine density score now there will be a uh, overlapping overlapping region and in that overlapping region uh, the threshold will be selected now what is this overlapping region uh, overlapping region represent this overlapping region represent that the inter the interclass variations one is uh, one is called the interclass variation other is called the interclass variation so uh, in, in in case of interclass variations interclass variation means the uh, whenever we collect multiple samples from multiple biometric samples from a from an individual then among those multiple among those uh, biometric samples there uh, there may be the there may be variations okay so this variation is called the interclass variation that means the uh, variations between uh, two uh, two classes and these two classes refer to the same user or same person okay this is called the interclass variation in case of interclass variations that means the class uh, two classes are different classes Different classes mean two different uh, 
if we collect if we collect the two samples from two different persons then these two different persons uh, may be found to be similar if we uh, may be found to be similar or may be uh, dissimilar so most of the cases it, uh, they are found to be uh, they are found to be dissimilar they are not similar but uh, in some cases this overlapping region is created okay if we if we uh, if we if we uh, plot the imposter uh, score and genuine score then we see that uh, there is there will be a uh, overlapping region in that overlapping this overlapping region means the interclass uh, interclass variations are minimum here okay interclass variations are minimum that is why this overlapping region is created and over this uh, over this over this uh, overlapping region we select our threshold and based on the threshold some user may be rejected by the biometric system and some user may be accepted by the biometric system okay now what is false reject rate if we consider the false reject rate as a biometric as a performance matrix then this false reject rate and false accept rates can be used in uh, can be used for verification purpose okay or these two performance matrix measure the error rates in verification so what is false reject rate false reject rate means number of genuine samples are rejected by the system okay number of genuine samples are rejected by the system in verification what is false accept rate false accept rate means number of imposters which are accepted by the biometric systems in in case of verification okay now if we uh, if we uh, if we consider the true uh, true uh, true positive rate or true accept rate then the true accept rate means the number of genuine samples those are accepted by the biometric systems okay so we can have uh, for verification purpose we can have the receiver operating characteristics curve now what is receiver operating characteristics curve receiver operating characteristics curve uh, is a trade off between false reject rate or false accept rate or we can see we can say that uh, roc curve is a trade off between true accept rate or false accept rate that means uh, if we plot a roc curve uh, using false reject rate and false accept rate scores uh, then uh, we can have the roc curve like the uh, left hand side image okay so here you can see that on the left hand side we can see the roc curves some of the roc curves and uh, x axis represent the false accept rate and y axis represent the true accept rate or accept rate okay so uh, true accept rate means number of number of uh, genuine samples that are accepted by the biometric systems and uh, x axis represent that the number of uh, number of imposters that are accepted by the biometric system now we can have another uh, performance matrix that is called cumulative match characteristics curve or cmc curve now what is cmc curve so cmc so here cmc curve is a trade off uh, between uh, trade off between the identification um, uh, identification probability and uh, ranks now in case of identification we need to we need to match the query template with a number of reference template okay number of reference template now uh, we want to see we want to uh, see the true identity in uh, in rank 1 or rank 5 or rank 10 that means if we want to see the the true identity at rank 1 that means only one one identity will be retrieved that means the corresponding reference template will be retrieved if we want to see and if we if we want to see the uh, ranks up to up to 5 then five identities the five, five corresponding identities or reference template will be retrieved against one query template okay so that is represented by x axis and the identification probability is represented by y axis and the trade off between this uh, two identification probability or rank is known as cumulative match characteristic curve okay so this cmc curve is used for identification purpose and roc curve is roc curve is used for verification purpose okay so and uh, here threshold is decided uh, threshold is decided from the genuine and imposter score distribution 
when these two distributions are made we uh, we see a uh, overlapping region over this overlapping region we draw a threshold and based on the threshold the genuine uh, based on the based on the threshold uh, some uh, some samples are accepted by the biometric system and some uh, rest of the samples are rejected by the biometric systems from those uh, rejection or acceptance we uh, we uh, we formulate uh, we formulate the uh, we formulate false reject rate or false accept rate uh, errors and from these errors we plot the roc curve okay so that's all for today uh, we will uh, uh, so we will we will discuss the rest of the topics in the next class if you want to ask any question you can ask me otherwise uh, we will stop now and every day after class uh, i am uploading uh, this video in youtube or uh, also i am sending the link to all of you uh, through mail so if you need uh, if you need the ppt also then i can also send you the ppt okay any questions sir which okay. book we will follow okay the name of the book is introduction to biometrics by anil k join and arun k ross okay okay it is it is published by springer Okay. So you sir. can you can find the soft copy of this book uh, in uh, in the internet. So uh, uh, if you if, if you don't find, then you can mail me. I can send you the soft copy of the book. Okay. Thank you. Sir. I have the soft copy of the book. And another book is another uh, book is by uh, J Man. No, uh, I think. James Oyman by James Oyman. Okay, that is another book by James Oyman uh, on biometrics. So you can also follow that book. If you don't sir. find the soft copy of the book in the internet, then you can mail me. I will send you the soft copy of the book. Okay. okay. Hard copy is also available. You can buy the hard copy. Indian most probably the Indian edition is also available. Okay. So Indian edition is. Uh, i think uh, it will be very low cost mm. okay. so around 1000 or 2000 uh, like this so you can buy that book also and if you find the soft copy then uh, it is uh, it is better to you uh, sir one more thing um, sir please explain that slide again what is s and what is n uh, n what is n s this previous slide yes yes this one what is s yeah yeah here s is the matching score okay. when the so here i is the identity this identity corresponding to the reference template okay and x is the x here is the uh, query template query template means when the when the uh, biometric sample is recollected okay from that recollected biometric samples uh, we extract the features and make the make that uh, feature set uh, a query template okay now this query template will be matched with the reference template and after matching the matching scores will be generated and this matching scores referred by small s okay now this s will be compared with the temp, uh, uh, threshold so here eta is the threshold okay so when the s is found to be greater than equal to eta that means the person is genuine the user is genuine and uh, because of the genuine user this user will be accepted by the system in case of verification okay otherwise this user will be rejected by the system and will be labeled as imposter so when this user will be labeled as imposter when s will be found to be less than eta okay okay thank you sir any other questions okay let's stop uh, this class so uh, in the next class uh, we will discuss uh, 
other topics remaining topics uh, from introduction to biometrics and uh, after that uh, we will move to the uh, move a, a new topic on biometrics trade okay